Hey there, welcome to another episode of Divine Design Podcast. I'm your host, Chrissy Morellis. Guys, I am super excited today. I have some folks from out of town. Actually, this is Derek and Jamie Dow. They are from Athens, Texas. Uh, Derek works with Cinecore, which is recovery. Tell me a little bit about that for a second. Uh, so Cinecore, we have uh, seven facilities in the state of Texas, one in New Mexico. Uh, we're a drug and alcohol treatment facility. And so this is how I know Derek and Jamie is they actually, well, Derek actually had Tim speak up in Tyler at Cinecore. And Tim literally was like, Chrissy, you're getting ready to come with me on this. And I thought, heck. And he goes, as a matter of fact, you're going to speak. And I thought, heck, what, what are you talking about? What are you talking about here? But anyways, what a joy to go up there. God definitely moved in that room uh, that day. But this is how I know these folks. Now, Derek did come down to Recovery Road on a Friday, and he was the speaker presenter. So he told his testimony, guys. And what a powerful testimony that he truly has, not to mention, and this is why I wanted to have him on the podcast. And as we were getting ready for setup, Jamie's wife is sitting over there just telling, you know, just telling their story. And I'm like, oh, hold up. Tim is here. We actually prayed before we started, you know, the podcast. And as Jamie was speaking, I'm like, oh, hold up. God just kind of told me, "Mm -mm, Jamie's a part of this. And where we're going to go on this podcast is a little bit different one that uh, I thought. And it's so interesting how God works and moves. Um, But she started talking about what she was doing for Derek the whole time. How long have you guys been together? We've been together for 14 years, been married for 12. Okay, so they've been together for a period of time, guys, but here's what's going to happen. I'm going to open the floor to them. I'm going to let Derek kind of talk about where he's been, why he is at the point in his life where he's at, why he's chosen to work for Senecor, why he's chosen to give back to his community, why he's chosen what he's chosen. So, Guys, first of all, thank you so much for traveling into town, being willing to open your heart, mind, and whatnot, and tell your story to who knows who this is going to reach. But y'all have a powerful story, and you have a super powerful story that I think definitely needs to be shared. So without further ado, Derek, tell me a little bit about where you've been and how you are right here and at this moment sitting with your wife. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so so yes, uh, and thank you for having me. Mr. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it was kind of a divine intervention the night that that I met Tim because I had a speaker showing up and uh, Mr. Kirk Gregg and y'all showed up with uh, one of my alumni's now. She was coming to, to speak and uh, she said, well, let's just all do this. And man, here God puts the people in our lives that need to be for sure. Uh, but yes, my name is Derek. I'm a great recovering drug addict and alcoholic. With the grace of God, I have 625 days clean today. Um, I've battled Woo-hoo. addiction for 26 years of my life with drugs and alcohol. Um, and it's just, it's been an up and down path of destruction, jails, institutions, death, almost. Um, and that's, that's what goes with addiction. Uh, it just, there's nothing good about it. And there's probably not, out of 10 people, there's probably at least one in a room this day and age that either has a family member or someone in their life that is suffering from uh, alcohol or drugs. You know. I would think the statistic would be greater than that, actually. You know, I, I keep up with, I was looking at the statistics, uh, just working in, in the recovery field, uh, and I can't keep up with the opioid. Um, I, I can't keep up with uh. it every day, the nationwide with the fentanyl now it's just it's crazy um i was looking on average uh i think it said 380 million a year from uh alcohol so alcohol is still you know, one of the number one and because it's legal uh that's the only difference right now is uh there's nothing you can put in the alcohol to where the fentanyl is being put in everything um but yeah i, I battled addiction um in and out of jail just like i say the the full path of destruction with it. Um, I actually ended up going to prison. I was trying to do right. I had a my first son that was born, got out, and was uh, 
battling a, cust- a custody battle, started hanging out with old acquaintances, ended up back in the same hill. So I ended up uh, having to turn, not having to, I, I terminated the rights to my to my first child, which, uh, you know, at the time, and, and that, it, it, I seemed like everybody owed me something. But, you know, by the grace of God, uh, he does still speak to me. You know, it's not something I can just jump right in and say I'm, I'm super dad now. I have friends in recovery uh, that have 30-plus years, and, and their children still don't speak to them. So it's a true blessing in that deal. Um, wow. Yes, ma'am. And so uh, just, just the ongoing battle with that. Um, and so I also uh, experienced losing. Uh, today is actually a very special day. The, the, this day actually just fell. We didn't plan this. Um, but we're one month away from a uh, two-year mark from losing my little brother at 36 to uh, drugs and alcohol. He actually died from alcoholism in, okay. in this one. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a powerful day for me. I was a little nervous at first, but I I, I put a little prayer request out there, and then uh, this, this helps me really uh, with my story. Uh, because, you know, I know all of Dylan's pain's gone now because uh, he was in a lot of pain. Um, and I, I for sure know that he's with me. Uh, this picture here actually hangs on my office wall at, at, my, at the facility. Um, and in, in saying that, um, by me not picking up drinking or, or using a drug for sure justifies him not dying in vain, you know. Um, and... And uh, there's wow. just lots, lots of things, yes. you know, uh, the, the mental health that goes, you know, mental health goes right along hand in hand with drugs and alcohol use. Um, so I have, I've had some of that. Uh, so let's share a little story. It, was his name Christian? Uh, Dylan. 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 Yeah. Christian is. Now Christian was. Uh, and I don't want to lose sight, but yeah, I, we're not, I'm thinking, we're, no. it, I just, you showed me that. Tattoo, and I think yeah. that's where I think that. But is that Courtney's? Yes. Okay, okay. So yes. hold up. We ain't talking about that. Back up. All right. So Dylan, let's talk a little bit more about Dylan. So as he's saying, you know, this is a brother. Younger? Youngest. Yes. So he's youngest brother. How many siblings do you there's, have? There's five of us total. Boys. Five boys. I'm okay. The, I'm the middle one. I'm the middle one. You're yes. the black sheep. Yeah, for <laughs> so sure. That's what happens. I know that. I'm the black sheep as well. Yes. Okay, but so Dylan was the youngest. Yes, he was the baby. Okay. And so, you know, this almost marks, like you said, two years that he's been gone. Right. Okay. And so all in all, what we will do, I mean, this is in loving memory. Like this podcast is in loving memory for Dylan. But I want you to sell the story a little bit. Um, and I want to flash up some photos. Now, guys, look, we've got some photos here that when he came to Recovery Road and presented these, I mean, they really, um, I mean, kind of shook me to my core, honestly. I mean, to really see as somebody tells their testimony and then see photos flashing up to tell their story on top of it, man, it's powerful. So you ready to go here? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and and in saying that, it it took me uh it took me over a year to uh to get these photos, and I uh, I was contemplating on using them or whatnot, but um after after looking at them and and that you know going with what what I felt God would want me to do and what Dylan would want me to do because um my my last treatment center I were actually got sober out in California um. Uh, my counselor, uh, Mr. Tyler Art, you know, first when we first met, he said, "I'm to love you till you love yourself," and uh, mm-hmm. he also said, uh, "There's there's no sugar coating this stuff," a, a choice word, but um, and and I had a connection with him, you know, and I I can have a connection with lots of people. I get along with a lot of people, but we had this this divine connection, um, and it stuck with me, um, and so. The, the no sugar coating this, and that's that's why I've chosen to use these pictures because within giving a speech, and sometimes you get off on talking, and, and I do, you know, um, but when I pull these out and, and the, the... Realization. The re- yeah, the realization that it comes. Is, yeah. um, it's, 
It's the real deal. I mean, look, guys, this is going to be kind of like just in your face, but that's why it's so powerful. And I think that's why God has blessed you. Like you said, some of these photos didn't come into fruition. Like you received these, and we'll continue to go on a little bit about that. But let's, you know, are you, I'm, are you, you're okay with me flashing yes, these out? Yes. So okay. my little brother, he, he battled alcoholism. Uh, we lost our dad back in 2005 from cancer. Um, I was still real bad on methamphetamines uh, the night that he passed away. Uh, so I kind of left my little brother to go get a fix. And like 10 minutes later, he called me and said he was gone. And I knew in his voice um, that I'd let him, you know, he was, you know, just devastated. I let him down. That's my little bro. Um, and he took that really hard. Um, and then in 2018, um, his would have been fiance wife, uh, took her life. Um, she suffered from a lot of mental illness going on that, that was never able to be addressed. Um, and so after that, it, it was an up and down roller coaster with, uh, with, the uh, alcohol with my little brother. Um, okay. So, and so this was on March the 11th of, uh, 2021, March 11th, 2021, when he was pronounced dead, they worked on him for, as you can see where he had coded, uh, they worked on him for almost an hour. Um, his body just couldn't take anymore. But guys, this is hardcore. I mean, this is hardcore. This is Dylan. Yeah, and using those these photos, uh, for sometimes, you know, going around the room, there's the, the group of when I use them at, at the facility when I get to give my presentation, I try to do about every six weeks so I can introduce myself. And, and also it helps build a, a relationship because that's my, as my new job, we'll get into just briefly in a little bit. Uh, to, to build a relationship and know kind of know a little bit about me, so yeah. I get their trust. And I love that you're real and raw, and I believe real and raw is what God's looking for to use His kids to, you know, shout out to bring more people and whatnot to change your lives. Now, let me ask you this: so this happens, how does this affect you, and what are the choices that you start to make? After this, so after uh, the last time I remember talking to my little brother, his uh, he had he was suffering from what what uh, we call wet brain. Okay. Um, he had it was very delusional. Um, actually, didn't remember that uh, that I had even just had a, a daughter. I was telling him about you know you need to get well so you can come see Landry, um, and he just he didn't remember anything. He said, "Do you have a daughter?" Um, and it's that, that's that part of, just like in page 67 of the big book that says resentment will eat you inside out. Um, because there was, there was times, uh, there was two or so years that I was there, had to be do birthday for, for his son. He's got a seven year old little boy, awesome little guy, um, had to, had to be there for Christmas, you know, uh, and, and that resentment starts setting in. Um, but I, I never would have imagined that that was the last time I was going to ever talk to him. Uh, so his phone actually broke. Um, and so I carried, uh, Dylan would call me uh, here and there about getting getting some help. And I'd reached out to about six different facilities um, that were willing to take him. However, the next morning after the, we call it the poor me, the pity party, uh, it was always an excuse, got to get to work or got to get uh and so I carried a burden, a pretty heavy burden, uh, that I wasn't able to help him, and, and I let it kind of get to me. I kind of isolated, um, and st I was drinking heavily. Uh, never really stopped, but I was I was putting more on. I was even drinking at work uh, with my supervisor, so I thought I was untouchable. Um, and being the drug addict that I am, the sensor in the back of my head went off. I ended up getting – because – in my mind, to numb the pain is to, to do some drugs, you know. So I got a hold of some meth and uh, ended up being some bad stuff, which all of it is, of course. Or maybe it's the fact that I hadn't messed with it in so long. Um, but I ended up getting really messed up. I, I went to work. Um, prior to that, uh, week, weekend prior to that, I decided I, was, I just wanted to go get some counseling. So I ended, actually ended up going into treatment. Uh, on the 13th of April, I uh, checked myself out on the 16th and uh, went back to work that Monday. And they, since I'd admitted that I had a drinking problem and drugs, they, they were like, look, till you finish your program, you got you to gotta go back to treatment. Um, at that point, 
I had been up for three to four days. Uh, my w- world was just crashing down. Uh, I was totally in the illusion of, you know, I've already failed my first son. I'm, my second son has been an up and down roller coaster. I've got this brand new baby. I'm just, I'm not fixing to go through this anymore. So I ended up out behind the woods, uh, jumped the fence of our our uh, working place at Champion Homes, jumped out in the woods, went across the railroad tracks, and uh, truly let the devil get to me. Um, I've lost, uh, like I say, lost my sister, would have been sister-in-law to uh, suicide, taking her life. I lost my best friend back in 2012. Uh, he actually took his life in front of his mom. And throughout um, throughout all this, I've always said I, I would, you know, no matter how bad life gets, whether it's drugs or what, uh, I would never take my own life. And here I was um, eating my own words because at that time uh, I, I was just, a slave to my addiction and letting everybody down, letting myself down. And I just, I didn't want to go through with it anymore. So I did, uh, I slipped my throat I slipped both my wrist and was trying to go for my femoral artery. Um, and so that's how that affected me. Uh, and that was on April 19th. So that was exactly a month, uh, from the date that we just buried my little brother. So on that day, uh, my mom got a phone call, not to mention that she just buried her youngest son that because w- they honestly weren't expecting me to make it. Um, I was in a almost 13 hour, 12 plus, 10 plus hour surgery. Um, I was on blood thinners, um, had lost a substantial amount of blood um, from this photo. As you can see, my lifeless body there. Um, but on that day was the day that God declared that he was not done with me and truly came, I believe, came to the pits of hell and and pulled me out. Um, Praise God. All right, I'm going to flash these up, guys. Okay. And this is him. Let's see. Yeah, that's the uh, first responders that... That were there on scene. Okay. Okay. So what is the time frame? So how long was it from your brother to this? That, exactly a month. Uh, so it was So Dylan passed away on March okay. the eleventh. Uh and so you were saying and, Yeah, we and we buried him. When I say we buried him, uh we're from East Texas, uh the us Paul Bears, uh and this that was my idea, but it's how it's been through through any of our friends that that I've lost in the past. Uh, like my one that took his life in front of his mom. We actually have our own shovels and, and we bury them from, uh, from the ground up on that. But we buried Dylan on the March the 19th. Okay. And, and, and this, so this on, is a month later, which, you know, guys, I mean, to hear his story and to think about, you know, how many people he's lost. And it sounds like that happened all so quickly, you know, maybe, or, or within time, you know, like you're saying a sister, correct? And then you're saying also friend. I don't know when that this, but this was all within a period of time close together, or no? This is time um, frames. It, it's it's spread out. Uh, I actually had okay had a family, and I don't think it regardless doesn't matter about time frames. Yeah. I mean, when you experience that much loss and it's so close to home, you know, and you know, just the things, and I can, I just feel like when you tell your story and whatnot, I just feel that weight. Like, I feel that weight of where you're at and whatnot. So, anyways, I mean, these, to me, are super powerful. And thank God that God pulled you out of that. And these men, so these men, the first responders. Yes, sir. That, I meant yes, that, that yeah, actually yeah. show up, basically save his life. This is one year later, correct? Yes. So, one year later, his mama calls him. <laughs> he didn't even know he was in the paper. <laughs> So yeah, I, so I, I got tell a little to, bit about this. I got to honor, uh, I got to honor them at the uh, Athens City Council meeting, um, and and uh, it was the irony in it, you know, because coming from a small town, uh, once you get branded the the town drunk and and what they call dopehead, uh, you carry that for years. Uh, but here I was at the you know city council a year later getting the, they got a life saving award I got to honor them and, and thank them for um, saving my life and and we shared uh, 
I actually got to meet their families. Um, in doing that, uh, one of them, uh, officer was telling me that, uh, which I didn't have a clue about, but that's why he was really concerned and, and put all effort in, actually lost his brother-in-law a uh, year prior to suicide. Oh, wow. Um, and, and that's something, uh, and I also have a family member that, that lost his life. He was actually supposed to deploy for the Navy SEALs uh, on my birthday, and this is going on two years. Okay. So just happened a little two years over. Uh, and, and that's something that, that needs to be addressed, and, and people need to know that there are people that you can call and talk to. You know, this mental il- illness, uh, addiction, you know, recovery. Recovery doesn't even have to have to do with uh, drugs, drugs or alcohol. alcohol. We can right. be recovering in many different ways. You know, there's depression, there, but, but there is... There is a, a solution. Uh, but, yeah, my mom called me and said, uh, do you know you're on the pay, uh, front page of the Athens paper? And she lives in, um, uh, almost three hours away. And uh, so I got a, a copy of it because I was contemplating on changing my phone number because working on, working on the steps and everything, the first thing we've got to change is everything. And I was like, Man, I just don't want any of those people calling me. But uh, so, yeah, we got the I got the paper and was like, well, I don't have to worry about any of the the drug dealers or anybody calling me because I'm on the front page. <laughs> with Athens. They see me now. That was you know? on the <laughs> Athens Police Department uh, page and and uh, yeah, on the front page of the paper. So I was like, my number's good. And it's so, yeah, that, it was pretty rewarding, though. Wow. Wow. I also want to chat about very quickly because all of this is brought you into what you do now, who, where you, you know, you work with people that are recovering from drugs and alcohol. And so to me, that's definitely giving back. He also got a promotion. So congratulations on that. Um, Keep up the good work, but talk to me a little bit about why you chose to go to Cinecor um, after what, you know, what you've been through. Okay. And so, and I don't share, I don't share this story. Uh, I've shared it like twice when I, when I give my testimonies, I actually did with my last testimony with my mentor. Um, so in the midst of my destruction, after I started drinking, long story short, and wife left with baby, I was on the destruction. Um, I'd actually tried to get a hold of some meth one night. Well, I didn't. I got a hold of some heroin. Um, I wasn't familiar with how to use that. Ended up doing uh, and drinking all day with that opioid. It, it's just a deadly cocktail. And long story short, I ended up ODing and was flatlined for I don't even know. I came to, and uh, first thing I saw was uh, Miss Jelena. She's a good friend of the family, and my mom were the only ones there. Uh, okay. When I woke up, uh, my certificate from when I graduated the program was Cinecor. That's I was face-to-face with it looking at it. Um, and it brought back a memory of one of my BHTs out in California, uh, Miss Nicole. Uh, we talked a lot of long, long hours and stuff. And, and I was telling her how I, I'd like to, to try to get in the recovery field. And, and, and she inspired me and built me up to that. She's like, well, why don't you do it? Um, so I reached out to one of my mentors, Mr. Andy Arnold, and said, uh, I saw a, a thing online for Cinecor. You know, I was only eight months sober. So I was still pretty wet behind the ears, and he was like, well, go apply, you know. Uh, he put a word in for me. I went up and met with uh, Miss Keisha Morris. Uh, worked construction my whole life, so I wasn't – I've never done a behind-the-desk interview. I was very <laughs> nervous. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm used to him throwing me a hard hat just saying, get to work. Right. Um, and she's she's hitting me with all these sophisticated questions and stuff, and – uh but God just kind of put it put it in the court, uh, put the ball in the court, and uh, she hired me, um, and and it was, whoo, uh, being being that new in recovery, you know, because that was the main concern of her is how are you going to deal with people coming in under the influence? Is that going to trigger you? Um, but it's more of, uh, and what I told her was honest, honest to God truth. Um, and it does still to this day, it just reminds me that I don't have to live like that anymore. Um, however, there's, you still being in recovery. And when you put, you know, put so many hours in some, sometimes you're working 70, 80 hours. It's a, you got to have a passion for for that line of work. Um, 
And thank you for that. Um, thank you that, you know, you do have that passion and you do want to give back. Um, okay, so that's Cinecore. Now, I want to kind of move into, you know, Jamie, because, and I don't know if we said this on the podcast yet, or if you were sitting there just telling me kind of, you know, y'all's story, but how long have y'all been together? <laughs> 14 years. Okay, so 14 years. I've been married 12. And you've been married 12. And you have children together? Yes, ma'am. How many children? Uh, we have two. Okay. One's 15 and one's two. Okay. And while she was, we were prepping for this, she was kind of telling her story that she, what she thinks about Derek, what she believes about Derek, and that she is a fervent wife in prayer um, and maybe silent prayer. I don't know if you were telling him this, but she, she's been praying for him 100% of the time, just going, Lord, I, you know, I know who he is, mold him and shape him. And, you know, I guess... Tell a little bit about what you were saying. Well, here we go. <laughs> and it's okay. It's okay. You're emotional. Um, it's okay. <laughs> like I said, we've had a, a lot of up and downs through our entire time together. Most of it had to do with him and his addiction. Um, the fight and the arguing, you know, the separating and whatnot. And, you know, we have filed for divorce before, but I always come back. And uh, everybody's like, why? Because there's something in him you don't see that I see. I've seen it from the beginning with him. Um, now, we did meet in AA. You know, right. we 13 stepped it. <laughs> and, uh, but that is a no no. <laughs> um, and it's just, I know God is all, I've prayed for him silently. I don't know if he's ever heard me pray over him while he's been passed out. You know, um, I do. You know, I am that, you know, I guess I'm not his backbone, but I have his back through everything. Always have, always will. Um, but I always tell God, you know, I know what he's capable of doing. I know what he's capable of being. I just need you to transform him some way, somehow. You know, I wasn't expecting, you know, that. Right. You know, and honestly, I knew when Dylan did pass away, I knew he was going to twist off. But I never would have dreamed it was that bad. Right. You know, when the helicopter people called me, you know, I talked to them on his phone, you know, whatnot. And I'm like, this is just a mean joke, you know. Because he called me before and I thought it was a joke. But a state trooper, he was drinking and he stopped the state trooper to ask for directions. Um, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, this is just evil, beyond evil. And, you know, I had all this stuff, you know, went to Mother Frances and Tyler, went to um, East Texas or UT, whatever it is now, you know, trying to get information on him. And they wouldn't, you know, we cannot confirm or deny, but make sure to take your insurance. You know, you yeah. know, as long as I've been with him, you know, I gave him every description of every tattoo on his body, you know, 10 and a half hours of surgery, you know, and praying, God, you know, please don't take him yet. We have kids. Right. You know, I mean, I understand, you know, if it's your will, take him, but I don't believe it is. You know, there's a lot more of him left. If right. You can just help him with his. Right. Know. And the reason to me, when she was sitting there saying this, that was so powerful to me because I want you guys to understand, too, if you don't already know that there is so much power in prayer. Um, I mean, each and every day, um, I pray and I see him move and I shake and, and doing things. And I'm like, wow, we should be praying for each other way more oh, than, and really throughout this process, you know, where I'm at in my walk is I'm noticing that, wait, I need to be praying for everybody. You know, sometimes you just pray selfishly for yourself on and on and on or your children or whatever it may be. But I see the power of prayer in that now I'm praying for everybody and praying for him to move in their life and whatever that is. But I loved what she said because I just thought that is so powerful. And I wanted y'all to see too, you know, a couple that has gone through what he's gone through, how you've kind of dealt with this, how he's kind of come out of this, how he's giving back now and how the Lord is moving y'all, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and when you talk of uh, prayer, uh, so my older, my brother and I that are 13 months apart, um, he and I actually used to drink and drug together. Uh, we, we did a lot of it. Um, however, to where I've been to six rehabs, uh, he he just simply got 
got right with God, you know, and, and Jesus Christ. Um, and so he's a truck driver. And in the midst of this this whole week of uh, the week that I, my spiritual awakening, he actually called me uh, and was like, can I come pray with you for 10 minutes later today? And I was like, nice. Yeah, you know, I'd already set up to go to, to treatment and everything. So I did not know that he was supposed to shoot down to uh, East Texas, a uh, hundred pl- uh, thousand plus. Yeah, okay. he, he came down from Florida wow. to come out there. And, and that's the proof that uh, that Jesus Christ worked through him to uh, to get to me. Because when he came out there and, and talked with me and prayed with me for 10 minutes, he said, man, Derek, have you ever truly surrendered in minutes? Like, have you ever hit your knees and actually, you know, because always when I'm in a bind or fisting to go to jail, God, get me out of this, you know. But he's like, but have you ever really meant it? Um, and on May 24th, before I went to work that morning, I actually did surrender and hit my knees. Um, and from there, um, I was actually supposed to go back to uh, the same uh, same facility that I was going to had been to twice prior to. Um had no idea that on May 25th, the next morning, that I would be leaving for California, flying uh, flying out to California where my life would change. Um, and it it wasn't a matter of it being the number three rehab in the nation. Um, it's like the guy, Mr. Trent, that talked me into it from Solution Base said, I'm telling you, you need to get out of your element because you already know what you're going to there. Um, and you don't have nothing to lose. You know, your wife's left you. you got CPS involved. Uh, my job was still backing me, um, but that was the best decision I ever made was going almost 1,800 miles out there to work on me. Uh, change your atmosphere, change, change everything around changed, to you, it, yeah, it, it to see things them. differently. And you know what? I forget about that in your story because, you know, I'm trying to think and recall when you presented at Recovery Road, but there's something special about that too. Wait a minute, because they ship you off to California to a rehab center, but Tell me the story. Remember, um, isn't it something that, how did you even get there to California? So I was on the phone with a uh, to find out because my wife always packed my stuff for me. Um, and I got transferred like six times. Um, and it's actually a BHT that I work with. Miss Christy now is who I was speaking with. And I was like asking her something. Uh, and she was like, would you take that on a cruise or something? Just some smart aleck remark. Gotta love her, though. Okay. I love me some Christy. <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, because I'm sitting on my back porch, poor me, drink, you know, with my beer. Um, and my phone, I don't know if it rang or got transferred. And it was a guy uh, named Trent, still calls and checks on me. Um, didn't have a clue. He was out in California. Was asking me if I had insurance. Uh, through the At the time, I had Blue Cross Blue Shield through Champion. Um, so I was like, well, what have I got to lose? I went and got my insurance uh I was 100% honest with him about my suicide attempt, you know, because, you know, he's sitting here talking this talk. You know, he was he was selling ice to Eskimos to me. I was like, this guy's good, you know. And uh, I'll, I'll never forget because my son was sitting out there or coming through the back porch. I said, son, I'm leaving tomorrow before my mom had left because I'd signed him over. I had CPS made me sign uh, him over to my mom at the time because either way, I was supposed to go somewhere. Um, and he – uh he talked his talk, and, and I was joking about it. And he said, well, we'll call you back in an hour. Uh, and so they called me back, and he already had the nurse doing my intake over the phone, and he photocopied me a picture of the airline ticket, you know. So I called my mom and was like, I'm, I'm leaving in the morning for uh, California. And she's like, no. you know, No, everybody thought I was crazy. And I was like, well, I don't need y'all to tell me that. But uh, so, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I didn't know if this was legit or not. I, I – uh, you know, I called her and told her she didn't believe, you know, she didn't know where I was headed. But because, I mean, you know, how many times have, you know, that's what happens when you've done this so many times to your family and friends. They're just like, whatever. But um, Oh, he yeah. sent me a picture of him on the plane. He's like, I'm going to get it right this time. I'm like, I hope so. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I actually have a, a picture that I used, too. I, I don't have it today. But, uh, but yeah, that, that was my, uh, you know, and God... Moving, moving mountains. And that's what uh, I think it is. There. And it's somebody gave you opportunity. You actually jumped on it, and you know some people might not have done that. And so I applaud you, you know, for that and making those decisions. Um, <clears throat> but yes, 
So, I, like I said, I really think you have such a powerful testimony, and I think that testimony is going to continue. I think you're going to change people's lives for sure with, um, you know, recovering addicts, alcoholics, or whatnot with your story, and especially using the photography. You know, I hate to say it, but when you look at these things and you look at this and you're like, holy shit, you know what I mean? Like, oh, oh my goodness, this it's, is uh, real. This is like, woof. and this is what people deal with. And the public, like you hear these stories, but you don't get to see this part of it. You know what I mean? So I just think it's extremely, extremely powerful. Now tell me, what are your goals and what are, what is kind of moving forward for you guys together, you know, as a couple and as a family, but also with Cinecore, where do you kind of see yourself going? Well, um, I'm just curious yeah, to see, no, you know, if you so, guys have chatted about this or talked about this. So God's, you know, God, once he opens that door, um, at one point of the summer, uh, when gas was, cause I drive a hundred miles round trip a day. I drive 50 miles, um, wow. right out one way to, to Cinecor. Okay. Um, so gas had gotten so high and I'm in my little B6, you know, praying in a Honda, uh, that still hadn't <laughs> happened, but one day, uh, so I went upstairs to Miss Keisha, you know, because I just, I couldn't, I couldn't keep doing it. And I actually was given my two week notice and, uh, wasn't accepted. My, no, my notice was not accepted. She said, no, 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 <laughs> no, you're not. Uh, she said, I'll keep you part time. Um, you can work whenever you want to work. Um, and, and I'm very grateful for that, but that was another God thing you say on our shirts. Um, because if I hadn't have stayed in that, but I committed to pretty much every other weekend. I took about a month off to, okay. to, uh, to, because in putting in so many hours and, and, you know, it takes a toll mentally health and everything. Sure. Um, it's a lot to go in and deal with, uh, with people that are coming in, um, and detox and everything. Um, it's, it's a full time job, but I took me about a month off. I stayed in the loop. Um, I knew that I went back to Champion. I knew it was kind of the devil's playground, but I, I needed to get up on some bills. Didn't have any intentions on staying there long, um, just just because I, I know me, you know, and I'll find an excuse. Uh, but that's the part where this day and age, to where just like alcohol is legal, you know, you, it's going to be everywhere you go. We just, right, you know. So I get a call one day. Um, and it's my good friend Jason. Uh, he and I actually started about a year ago to, to date. Um, well, I think we're about a week apart. Um, and he had just moved upstairs. He moved up to the outreach manager, new outreach, um, outreach clinical manager. So he calls me and says, hey, uh, you're never going to believe this, but uh, there's a new position that just came out uh, for the RSS, Recovery Support Specialist in Illumina. And I said, uh, Okay, cool. You know what? And he's like, no, you're applying. You know, he's like, you know, it's not an option. You're applying for this. And so he wasn't taking no for an answer. And like Jason, he's called yeah, that's Yeah. <laughs> and, and he and I, you know, we, we met through uh, our mentor, Mr. Dan Hosh. Uh, Dan helped him out. You know, he's, he's, got a, he's got a serious story too, you know. Um, and, and so I applied for the position. Um, and like I say... I got it. Uh, January guess. the 11th, I actually rolled over uh, full-time as a recovery support uh, alumni Congratulations. Specialist. I remember that day. I think you posted on Facebook, and yeah. we knew that was coming when you um, came to Recovery you Road to speak that, that you were but, just yeah, well, in that process. good times now for you. Yeah, and so, yeah, and that was the... happening for him on the 11th. He got his new job on the 11th. We're here today on the eleventh. It's 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 a new year and, wow. and definitely yeah. That, I mean cool. I didn't. Um, that's su me. that's super cool. Yeah, Jamie, you keep note of all that. You know, <laughs> you keep so, track. Yeah. And, and I pra I praise the Lord for that. You know, uh, for He and I both because uh, you know we went out and introduced uh, uh, ourselves to the Iron House. It's uh, sober living for men. Introduced uh, my boss that was down from Houston. Uh, and when Miss Keisha, our facility director, um, uh, you know, she told those guys and, and the director out there, and Mr. Dan, uh, almost made me tear up. But she said that when she told him that, uh, that he and I were two of the hardest workers and that she would trust uh -huh. either one of us with her family, um, that, that meant a lot. Sure. Um, but for just to be one year in 
And uh, we've advanced to actually working for cor- – we work for the corporate office out of Houston. Um, that just gives me chills right. because, you know, but that's that's the paying off to the heart and the passion that we put into this job, and that's what you have to have. Um, and anybody that works in the recovery field can, can vouch for that. I know right. Tim knows. Right. Yes. Um, my dear friend, it's a blessing that we got to meet uh, how, how he and I and, and Kirk – Matt, you know, but through meeting them, uh, we have resources all the way. You know, like Kirk, he, he has resources uh, all over the United States. And, and through him, us, but the more connection, you know, you get rid of the dope dealers and get the hope dealers. The hope dealers, uh, right. But it's just a matter of, yeah, I had a client that left for a one-year program out in California just a couple weeks ago. Um, and this here, uh, I know we're probably getting close, but this story and ending with with my recovery path. Okay, so I carried the burden of uh, of not being able to help my little brother. Um, so, and this just happened this weekend, within the last week. This actually happened Friday. Um, so, a guy that I used to work with uh, on the power plants and shutdowns, and my little brother worked with me as well, um, called about his big brother. Okay, uh, his big brother struggling. Um, they live up in the city, up in Dallas. Uh, where fentanyl is, you know, it's just, but anyway, big brother's struggling, little brother's calling to check on him. Uh, And he reached out to me, you know, uh, and here I am in the recovery field and I'm sitting here thinking because I'm looking at my picture of my little brother on my wall there. uh, And I'm just thinking, man, this is, this, there's no coincidence in this, you know. Uh, And then in the same day, get a call, a a referral. I'm sitting there talking to this guy and he said, well, he said, I'll tell you what, uh, I've, been, I've been clean and sober 25 years, uh, <coughs> but I, I've, I've slipped up, you know, some things happened with this alcohol. Uh, turns out he was a pastor for 31 years. Wow. Uh, and wow. he's like, uh, yeah, said I hadn't been to church in uh, two years. I said, you, and that's what I told him. I said, you don't have to go to church to have faith because uh, you that's wouldn't right. be on the phone with me, I promise you that. And I get those good chills, you know. Right. But that's just saying, gotcha. uh, yeah, addiction doesn't discriminate. Uh, you know, doctors, attorneys, judges. No, it does not. Um, it pre- does pastors. Not. Um, you know, I just want to try to spread the word that, that there is a solution and we do recover. And I try to promote recovering out loud. Uh, so, you know, that's what I tell my people that are my, my clients, you know. Because in the United States, only 11% of people yes. get treatment, you know, out, and that's not very many people. Right. No, the percentages are very You know, yeah, low. you've earned that seat. Recover out loud, learn your sobriety day, and, and, and recover it. And I love what you're about, and I love that Cinecore wants to hang on to you. I mean, they obviously do not want to give you up, <laughs> you know. And what blessing. Jamie sees in you, they see in you. What she sees in you, I see in you. You have to know that you are, you've got a little piece of God in you, and you shine, you're light. And so I don't know what God's going to do with you guys. I mean, I have no clue, but I believe he's going to work through you guys. He's going to heal, and he's going to shine that light. And hopefully with this podcast, we'll see, you know, but that you're going to make a difference. But it's really through God. We allow God to use us and that spirit to come out. Um, but you guys, I'm, you know, I love y'all. Jamie, when you first came in and she came into small group and she was like, (laughs) Jamie, do you remember you had this bag and you just kept on folding it and try to fold it and try to fold it. I was about to grab that damn bag out. I was like, girl, I'm going to fold it for you, you know, but you were, she was just telling her story and where she comes from. And you guys, and I love what about y'all that y'all are really real and raw and you share your stories and to even step it up. Like this, I can only imagine what God is going to do with y'all and, and how he's going to work through both of you because it's not just you, it's y'all together. Because to me, it's all about the home behind the scenes first. You know, of course, he's working on us continually, but I think you guys in the end could be extremely power couple, you know, for the Lord, changing lives. Because Jamie, you are in recovery as well, correct? Yes, or, ma'am. you know, so... Y'all doing this together and telling, you know, sharing your story together. Now, do you do anything with Cinecore? Do you ever come in and? Oh no, or, ma'am. Okay. No, ma'am. Um, actually, honestly, um, you know, I run a convenience store. Okay. Um, it is what it is. I love my job. I love my customers. Um, I talk to a lot of people. 
they can find me. They're like, you need to be a counselor. And I'm like, yeah, no. Um, so my mom's like, you know, I always say I'm a bartender, you know, because you go to the bar, tell people your right. problems. And, and, and you I hear all of them. You hear all the problems, yeah, too. Yeah, I have a solution. Mom's like, well, why don't you be a hairdresser since you don't drink? I'm like, whatever. Um, but, like, when we go to C2R, um, all the youth, because there's a breakout group, um, you know, he's better with adults. And I'm okay with adults, I guess. Of course, sometimes I just want to shake you and be like, what? But the kids... <laughs> And right. I'm like, I don't even like kids, but they all seem to like me. And so I can talk to them all day, you know, every day. So, you know, there's this one that has my heart. And uh, I thank God, you know, brought her to me for a reason because I was on the phone for almost two hours with her. And wow. they say that's it because she took 49 sleeping pills. Oh, wow. And she was ready to end her life. And I'm like, it's not worth it. You know, I've already explained to you, there's going to be hard days. It's life. You have to live life right. in life's terms. Right. You know, part of my language, bad shit happens. Right. You just have to learn to maneuver through, through that. It, right. You right. know, and uh, so they said that if I wouldn't been on the phone with her for two hours and Derek, you know, he got home, like, I need you to call somebody. I need you to do this. You know, my girl, you know, I'm having an issue. But they're like, that's the only thing that saved her life from her not going to sleep and sleeping. Wow. And never waking up. Wow. And I know that a lot of this and what you guys do or what you do is you are on the phone. You know, you're doing that. You were talking to people and maneuvering and whatnot. There was something that I want to say about you when you went into a small group and you, you, you know, you weren't even there. You just came, you came with Derek, Derek talked, you know, y'all were getting ready to leave. You came into the small group and you were just chatting with me, but some of the things, and then you started chatting with the other women and some of the things that you said and that how you positioned yourself and you were talking about your children and some of the things that you were doing, I thought, man, this is a powerful woman. Um, so I think together you guys are going to be able to do a lot of shit. So God, I don't know what you got for them, yeah. but keep on, you, you know, using them, working through them and, and let that light, God, that light shine through them. Um, here's what I would do when it end. I'm going to flash up because this is Dylan's son, correct? Yes, yes. ma'am. And so I'm gonna, we're going to kind of close with this. Okay. Um, but this is Dylan's son. And, and to me, he had this, he just had this printed out and it just, it really breaks my heart. It's, but, it's a very powerful picture. Um, and I've actually used that picture on one of my posts. To, the side of it says the cemeteries are full of people that we're going to get sober tomorrow. Um, but yeah, that. That picture, just to me, um, you know, then that's him telling his daddy bye, you know. Um, and and there's words can express on that. Um, the the love that and empathy and that this child needs because now he's going on, uh, he'll be eight uh, at the end of this month, actually. Um, 27. And okay. yeah, and so he's lost his mommy and his daddy. Um, and so he needs everybody. Yes. He he doesn't need people fighting, bickering over over stupidness. Um, you know he needs all the God's love and and from each other and yes. every family member. Yes. That's and I'm hoping that possible. your family can you know pour that yeah. on him. Uh, uh, but I, oh, go, go ahead. ahead, no, go ahead. I was going to say I'm I'm not going to give up the secret, but I do have a because uh, uh, Damon and I I'm Uncle Damon, Uncle Damon, Uncle Derek. Uh, we're always in competition. But uh, I always win with the the coolest stuff to do. Uh, I have him an awesome birthday present uh, surprise. But in case he might be watching, uh, I can't give it up. But but yeah, don't give it up. Uncle Derek's still going to be the winner on yeah, this. Yeah. Oh, that that is too funny, guys. You would think in their yeah. 40s they wouldn't be in as much competition, but they are and nonstop. I, but you know what? I love it. I love it because there's a love for that child big time. You know, and, and where he's a we're great spending. kid. He yeah. really is, and he's smart as a whip. Oh, um, he's cute as can be. Our two-year-old Landry, she absolutely loves him. And, uh, of course, he's like, she's as big as me, and I'm almost eight. Yeah, well, it is what it is. <laughs> you're like, you're like, well. <laughs> yeah, sorry, you got the short gene in the family there, baby. Oh, Yeah. Oh, he looks like he's precious. He is a doll baby. Oh, but guys, I want to thank you so much for taking your time on a Saturday to come out and thank do this. For, for you guys coming to Recovery Road, you know, spending the night and doing this. Like I said, you know, from the bottom of my heart, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. But I wanted to share your story because I think it's very, very powerful. But the more that I get to know both of y'all, 
I really think this is something that it's y'all together lifting each other up because what I've learned is relationships, you know, it's not all we're putting hundred percent. Somebody's 60, 40 that day or whatever. And it's a balance to counteract each other. But I see y'all as a powerful couple, keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on giving to Senecor, <laughs> keep on helping the people. And I'm just excited to see what he's going to do, but what you guys are going to do together, because I don't just think it's you. I just felt this in this room when you did this, it's y'all. That's what I think. But anyways, yes. that's what I kind of, well, what I feel like he put on me. And maybe it's you behind the scenes or whatnot. And maybe I'm t- way speaking out of place here. I have no idea. No, I've told Andy Orton before, I'm a better behind the scenes person than I am in the limelight. I don't need all that. You know, give me a task. I can get it done. I'm willing to help. I'm willing to do anything. You know, but I'm a behind the scenes kind of person like I was in high school. Can be on stage. I'll be the stage manager. I'll get everything going how it needs to go. <laughs> and yeah. maybe that's how y'all work, and that's how mm. this will be facilitated. But right. yeah, I'm and excited, and yeah. like I said, in loving mem- memory of Dylan. This is in loving memory of Dylan, and I'm just so excited to see what y'all do in the future. And we will definitely keep in touch with each other. And oh, I think there's sure. definitely and, and yeah, more and I, to come. I just yeah. can't stress enough that if if you're struggling or know know someone that is. Uh, you can look me up on Facebook under Derek Dow or and private message me. Um, I'm going to leave you a few cards, my business cards. It has Perfect. my personal number. Um, yeah, you know, and, he, and he's phone's Senecor never too coming heavy. out of Tyler. Yeah, so. and, and I'm out of – but on my own time, you know, I'm on my own recovery. And, and if someone's in a bind, that's that's what the phone's for. Right. We promote that to, to avoid the situations of ending up, uh, you know, where we never thought we would be. And I will say, you know, I've caught up a couple times, and he's been on the phone helping somebody at 2 or 3 in the morning. And I can hear the conversation, and I'm like, okay. Because I still, after almost, you know, him, you know, 600, what, 89 days, I still get up and check if he's not in the bed. I need to know what he's doing. That's just God at work. You know? and yeah, and I think it is. So Of course, some days he's like, I'm going to the gym, and he'll leave me know, going to the gym, and I'm like, okay. We're all, yeah. Oh, I love you guys. We love, love you. you Sam, I love you. I love you. Love you. All right, guys. Until next time.